Hey friends, so today we're going to be doing volume two of the Making Original Sounds series, I guess it is now. Um, essentially the idea is we're going to take really boring, vanilla, kind of whatever sounds and turn them into uh, sounds that are a lot more sonically interesting. If you want to watch the first video, I'll just put the link up here. Anyway, let's let's do this thing, huh? So in this first track, we have Ableton's Electric, which is their e-piano instrument. <laughs> And this sound is, you know, it doesn't have any space. It doesn't have any reverb. Um, and, you know, in nature, you never, ever, ever hear sounds without reverb around them, right? So potentially that's why this is boring. But instead of using reverb, we're going to go ahead and use Ableton's Corpus, which is an incredible device that, it yes, it creates reverb, but reverb that's sort of tuned. It's like a, it's like a resonant reverb. So this is like a resonant body or something. <laughs> So immediately, this is more interesting to me. Um, you know, we have a situation where if you're ever standing in a hallway or a stairwell or anything like that, you you always hear sounds. Like if you're outside of the club, for example, you hear sounds uh, that are certain frequencies are extremely accented, like they're a lot louder, right? So now this might be a bit much. And another thing is that when you have accented sounds, um, certain notes are going to be louder than others, right? Like that sound, for example. So it's really good to use a compressor after this. You know, just some light settings on a compressor. Another thing I'm going to want to do is turn the dry wet down. Now, it also has a filter control, and this is really useful because if I want to get some of, some of that low end is overpowering, especially those low mids. So now, it's a little more controlled, right? Maybe I'll open it up and take more low end out. Might be able to get away with a little more dry wet now. So now we've got an extremely interesting sound that before it was just nothing. So without it, and then with it. So I should just say, you know, you can you can experiment with Corpus and it's incredible. And I kind of want to take you to the second example because Corpus has a lot more under the hood. So in this case, I'll turn this off. We just have an operator, just an operator baseline, boring as possible. So I'm going to turn on this Corpus and I'll check this out. So I'm going to ungroup this and just do this from scratch. This is my original sound. Boring. So I'm going to grab a corpus, which is in your audio effects, drop, drop it in here. And right off the bat, the corpus is just going to play whatever it's tuned to, right? It's a monophonic instrument. It doesn't, it doesn't play multiple notes. And when you play in different places, it doesn't change. It doesn't change what's going on. But you can open up the side chain input, which is MIDI. So I can, I can choose Corpusness, which is the name of this track, and then I can choose Frequency. So now this will retune Corpus every time I play a new note. So the, the opportunity here is crazy. So if we put this on full just to get all the, all the goodness in there, let's choose String and see how this goes. Pretty awesome, right? So if you add some spread, some nice wide sounds and you know you could maybe tune this down i mean this will just take any vanilla bass to the next level so yeah there's all these different choices you can make oh yeah i really like the pipe setting so yeah any monophonic signal will really benefit from using corpus with its sidechain input engaged all right, so in this next example, I have just another boring bass sound that I made with Ableton Analog, right? So something we can do is we can add layers to this uh, very easily by using Instrument Rack. And I'm going to go ahead and just right click on the top bar, hit group, look at my chain list, right? So I can see all the different instruments. And I'm going to go down to the Forest Collection stuff and grab 
So that sounds juicy enough. So I'm going to grab this sound and drag it and drop it into the instrument rack chain list, and it will make a simpler. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is, I mean, I can play this. <laughs> and there's that sound under there, but first of all, it's quiet. And second of all, I want to just kind of pick like the juiciest part. Yeah, the juiciest part right here. So I'm going to turn on loop, and now we get... Now, depending upon the loop or the, the sound that you choose, you may or may not need to fade the loop ends a little bit um, so that it's a little bit more smooth. Okay. But now that we've got this, we've, we've got this noise layer in there, you know, it, it now is kind of part, part of the sound. But what I've noticed is that you can't just do this and expect this sound to be unified or gelled together. So I think it's really important whenever you add like a noise layer, you know, using this method that you also grab, I like to use overdrive. This is one, this is one of many ways to kind of get these sounds to gel together. So now we got, it's made the noise a bit louder. Maybe I'll distort some of the lower end. And another thing I can do is add a compressor just to try to gel this sound, try to try to glue all these like parts together. So yeah, adding later layers is a great way to get a little bit more out of an instrument. All right, in this next example, I have an Ableton Tension, which I feel like is a great foundation for making really interesting sounds. Um, but in this case, let's grab an Ableton Echo. Any delay can do this. Echo just happens to have a lot of features that I like to use. First of all, I'm going to unsync the delay, turn it down pretty low, and I'm going to turn the feedback up pretty high. What this is going to do is it's going to cause some comb filtering. It's going to be like a resonant space, right? But... That's pretty rad. If we turn it on ping pong mode, though, we get a more wide sound, right? So this is cool. Um, you know, you can experiment around with the with the milliseconds, and if you stay under forty, you get some pretty wild sounds, right? Well, you might think, well, hey, man, that's not really musical. It's gonna kind of screw up my going to screw up my notes. Well, the next thing you'd want to do is just high pass it a bit, you know, to get it out of those like the lows of your of your notes, right? Right? Pretty nice, huh? In this uh, case, Echo has a uh, reverb. So now... And if you want more decay, always turn that feedback up. Just, just be aware. <laughs> it can take off. And Echo's cool in that it has, you know, modulation. So you can modulate the delay time, which will give you... kind of like a chorus-y kind of thing going on. It'll move the delay time up and down a little bit. <laughs> so whimsical. All right, next example. So I'm going to grab another sound from that forest collection thing. If you want these sounds, they're available right here. Um, let's just get, yeah, here we go. So you can just take a sound, drag it into your bottom here, drop an instrument or sample here, bam. Now we have yet another simpler. So I'm just going to kind of grab a juicy part. Kind of quiet. Now you can play any instrument as, you know, you can play any sample as an instrument if you want, but let's get in here and maybe make this real short and kind of experiment and learn a little bit about what this can do. So that's a really short sound, right? Now, if I turn off snapping and I turn it on loop, I get, what is the meaning of this? So what I can do is I can actually dynamically change the length of this sample and you get this super rad, crazy effect happening. Now, if you decrease the length, you get, it kind of spins up into audio rate, right? 
Now, if I go the other way and change the loop length, I get, I just, it just goes backwards. So there's two timbres here, right? That you can use. Now, this is kind of cool. So, you know, I mean, you know, one option is you could make, you know, a clip with a note in it, right? Let's see, we'll make a C sharp. And so now I've just got this blah, 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 blah. Now, if I go into the track and click on the control that I want, right? I clicked on length. If I double click on the clip, you will notice that length is now a, con a control that I can automate within the clip, right? So I'll just make a nice ramp here. So now we have. <laughs> you know, you can mess around with it and make it kind of. <laughs> so fun for days. Well, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is just to grab is just to grab an envelope from your Mac's devices if you have such a wonderful thing. And then you can just map envelope to that control. So map envelope to length. <laughs> Weird effects for days. All right. So let's try something else with this. Another thing we can do is I'm going to make this back to normal. Maybe we'll select a different area just for variety. This is a pretty dynamic sound. So something we can do is we can use, I don't know, you might, you might really enjoy this. I enjoy this a lot. I'm going to grab a vocoder. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually modulate this sound with the pitch of an operator. So here I have an operator and it's just it's just the saw waveform, right? A really harmonic sound. It's important that you use a really harmonic sound. So the saw SWD setting here gets us a nice thick saw, right? So if I go back here, I can choose the carrier, which is the thing that establishes the pitch, okay, as six operator, right? So before we had So in order to have the operator take over the pitch of this sound, I have to arm the track, right? I have to mute the track because I don't want to hear the operator and I have to turn the dry wet back up. So now we have. <laughs> if I turn on warp, it'll make it so that this sample will always play at the same rate, which is kind of nice. Right now, something that's nice is if you hit enhance, it will make it so that the, the, that the sound will, will appear brighter. Pretty rad sound we're getting now, right? So maybe I'll take a little bit of these low mids out. Now, another thing you can use, um, a great way to bring out a little bit more of the top end is to use some upwards compression. Just grab an OTT. And usually fully wet of this is always just a little bit over the top. Hence the name. So pull the amount down a little bit. Now you get. And maybe we can choose a different. Pretty awesome bass sound, right? And so you can get in here and change all kinds of stuff like the formant. Awesome. So <laughs> yeah, that's just fun for days, right? So in this next example, check this out. Okay, so you're like, all right, well that's that's kind of that's kind of crazy. What I'm doing is I'm is I'm setting up Ableton to kind of create me a bunch of bass samples. Now let me show you this. Let's just do this from scratch. I'm gonna delete everything. So now we just have an operator patch. And so what I've done is I've just made a clip that's just kind of playing through this. Let's just go ahead and duplicate this time, make it twice as long. So what's happening is it's just playing this operator patch, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab an auto pan, okay? And I'm going to set the auto pan's 
LFO to one bar. Might want to set it lower, I'm not sure yet. So what I'm gonna do is if I turn this all the way up, we get <laughs> this kind of thing. Let's actually make it a quarter. Now, at this point, this isn't really useful to us. What I want is I want one shots. I want base one shots. So what I can do is I can turn up the phase all the way and now I get, and if I choose this setting, I get, maybe I'll make it a half. So now if I play this, I'm just gonna get constant bass one shots. So any effect that has an LFO attached to it, I can use to kind of filter this sound down. And if I choose random or sample and hold methods, I can consistently make myself a bunch of bass samples really fast. So let's start by adding some erosion to this. I'm just gonna let this play. That's kind of nice. Maybe we'll put a chorus after that. Okay, so now we've got kind of a, a crazy sound going. I'm gonna grab something that has an LFO that can move around. So maybe the most obvious one is an auto filter. So auto filter has an LFO, but if I grab its sample and hold mode down here, okay, the, the last one, right? I can turn it to a musical, a musical subdivision that's the same as the auto pan, okay? So now I'm gonna get, so now I'm, if I turn this amount, I'm gonna get variations, okay? So let's check this out. I'm gonna play this with the clock. It's important that you play it with the clock so that all the LFOs sync. Now you might not be hearing much yet. That's because we need to now add some harmonics back into the sound. So I'll grab an amp. Maybe I'll put it on rock mode, make it stereo. So now we're gonna get a little bit more. So we're starting to hear some changes. Let's grab, let's grab a frequency shifter. Again, same thing. Get on this LFO turn it up a little bit, make its rate at least the same as auto pan, if not longer, right? So then I wanna turn this, eh, dry wet halfway, you know. Now we're getting somewhere. Now you can always go back to the operator and do the same thing. As of right now, it's not even synced. So I could change the operator sync to something longer or something shorter and I get, In fact, let's try to switch the, the auto filter the other way. <laughs> Might be a bit too much on the amount. Once I've got this set up, I can make a new audio track and feed the input from operator and just record some of the results. So now I've got myself a whole collection, as you can see right here, a whole collection of bass sounds that I can then just drag into arrangement mode and chop up into individual samples, right? Just as simple. Select it, Command E, boom, right? So now that I have, that's a sample, okay? So I've just got endless samples now to work with, okay? So there's just a hundred million ways you could do this. Let's do one more thing. I'm gonna grab one more operator because I love operator. And we're gonna, we're gonna take a listen to this guy. Now, I the last video I showed you the grain delay and we messed around with it, but this time I wanna show you something even more crazy. So if I turn the delay time up a bit and the feedback up a bit, I get, I get delay that repeats, right? Now, before I had you put it up all the way to an octave, so you get that kind of spray kind of, um, so you, th you get that kind of swarmy delay, right? <laughs> well, instead of doing that, what I'd like to do is we're gonna turn the spray up a bit. Uh, 
We're going to unsync the delay time and make it real short. And we're going to turn the dry wet down. Now instead of doing an octave, let's put it on a 7. What 7 will do is it will basically be a perfect fifth from our original sound. Isn't that wild? You turn the frequency down, you get... Now check this out. If I just choose a note just to hold, okay, I'm going to stop everything and just make a new track. We're just going to hold this note. Now check this out. get these amazing drone sounds. Let's try that an octave higher, why not? Just by changing these, these operator levels, we're just changing the harmonic quality of this sound, and it's just consistently creating this series of fifths going up and you get this angelic kind of crazy and of course that would sound incredible with some verb <laughs> there's got to be an album in there somewhere an ambient album <laughs> So yeah, steal my technique, make something rad with it. Anyway, for the last section of this, I want to take this I want to take this in a different direction. Let's go ahead and record the output of track 9 into a new audio input, okay? So we're just going to choose audio from track 9 and let's play this sound into this new track and I'll change some of the controls to get some variation all right so now I have this sample okay let's go ahead and take this sample and do something crazy with it so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag this into arrangement view onto the track that I'm using so that's track 10 okay Going to go back to arrangement. Now we're just going to look at this sample. On Ableton 10, you can just hold shift. And you see that little arrow that pops up? What I can do is I can take this sample and just drag it out. Okay? So now we get this really long sound here. Let's take a listen to it. Now, right now it's on the beats algorithm. If I change this to texture, I'm going to get some pretty crazy granular stretching sounds, especially if I re-pitch it. So let's go up an octave and see what happens. Now that I've stretched this out and made it go up an octave on the texture mode, we get... Let's stretch it out even further. <laughs> so... If we turn flux all the way down, what'll happen is, is that the grains won't shift at all in terms of their size. They'll just remain the same size. So we can get... By changing the grain size, we get these crazy effects. So yeah, yet again, let's do the same thing as before. We're going to automate that parameter. Now, if you add flux back in, you get some variation on that. So we get... <laughs> A little bit wackier. I kind of prefer it to be pretty low. So we can get this concise effect, right? Now, you can do this in a, you know, in a quick manner, too, and you get some pretty dramatic kind of crazy sounds out of it. <laughs> so 
So another thing you can do is you can always you can always really quickly create a new audio track and select resampling from the input. And then if this is a, a section that you liked, let's say we like that section. I can just quickly record that. Right? And now I have this new sample that I can then <laughs> I can then take this, turn it on to texture mode, and maybe we'll pitch it back down to the original pitch. And now I'm going to hold shift and stretch this out. Now, if you don't have Ableton 10, it's just as simple as changing the segment BPM of the of the clip and just turning it up real high, right? So now we get this wacky new sound. It's the same thing as holding shift and dragging it out. So anyway, if you keep this this process up, you're going to get a lot of original sound material. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you found this uh, to be interesting and fun. I uh, hope you can use some of these techniques. If you like this kind of content, like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. I'll see you next time. Thank you.